Tash Dile. This is Sakina Bhatt and welcome to Tibet This Week. A weekly news on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines. World celebrate His Holiness the Dalai Lama's 86th birthday. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration condole the demise of former Himachal Pradesh Chief Minister. His Holiness the Dalai Lama reaffirms continued promotion of compassion. Kasha appoints political secretary and spokesperson for Central Tibetan Administration. Members of German Parliament send congratulatory greetings to Sikyong. Tibetan Medical and Astro Institute facilitates Sikyong pamphleting. Tibet Bureau Geneva releases report on atrocities of Chinese Communist Party in Tibet. Office of Tibet, Washington D.C. discusses China's destructive policies in Tibet. Office of Tibet London discusses Holiness's contribution to environmental protection. Irish Senator Malcolm Byrne condemns ongoing abuse of human rights in Tibet. People around the world celebrated His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama's 86th birthday on Tuesday this week. On the auspicious occasion, the Central Tibetan Administration held an official ceremony with cultural performances and songs dedicated to His Holiness. During the ceremony, a video message from His Holiness on the occasion was presented. You see, I really uh, appreciate the Indian sort of concept, secular, without religion, but keep honest. Uh, Karuna and Ahimsa. So, uh, dear my friend, on my birthday, this is my gift. Uh, so please keep in your mind. Heads of the Tibetan religious tradition send their greetings to His Holiness the Dalai Lama on the occasion. Si Kyung in his Kasha statement called on China to recognize His Holiness the Dalai Lama as the key to resolving the Sino-Tibetan conflict and invite His Holiness to Tibet and China on pilgrimage without any preconditions. His Holiness the Dalai Lama is one of the foremost guides of our time and is one of the few individuals who can reorient Sino-Tibetan history towards a positive direction. The Chinese government should therefore recognize that His Holiness the Dalai Lama is the key to resolving the Sino-Tibetan conflict. It should utilize the opportunity offered by the mutually beneficial middle way approach to foster a harmonious environment where Chinese government, where Tibetans and Chinese can coexist amicably. World leaders including Prime Minister Narendra Modi, U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen, Prince Mongosudha Budilesi of South Africa, among many others, extended their birthday greetings to His Holiness. Tibetan communities and Tibet supporters from different parts of the world including Japan, Belgium, Mongolia, France, Lithuania, Canberra, Washington DC, Taiwan, London and India celebrated the day. His Holiness the Dalai Lama expressed his sincere gratitude to all those who have expressed greetings on his 86th birthday and reaffirmed his decision to live till 110 years of age. And more people this is sincerely express this is that way then that, that gives me determination, inner strength. I must live uh, long, as, as much as sort of, uh, life possible. So according to some of my or say the dreams and some sort of uh, predictions, my life uh, 110 and some say 113. So you see, more people, you see, genuinely sort of express uh, uh, friendly and uh, respect and 
expectation. So I determined I must live uh, at least 110 years. His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration expressed sadness on the demise of the former Chief Minister of Himachal Pradesh, Sri Veer Bhadra Singh. The Central Tibetan Administration held a prayer service on Thursday this week and closed its offices for the rest of the day as a mark of respect. Sri Veer Bhadra Singh passed away in Shimla this Thursday at the age of 87. In his talk on compassion in healthcare by Dr. Reddy's Foundation, His Holiness spoke about his dedication in promoting compassion and nonviolence in a secular context grounded in reason on Wednesday this week. When asked about how one can practice empathy and compassion at a time when medical treatment has become allied with business, His Holiness answered that every human activity should be infused with affection. Uh, doctor, as a sort of uh, profession, then their work itself is something uh, helping other people, some very relevant uh, with genuine sort of sense of concern of the, the patient's or say being. The doctor's profession is something very, very sort of also the close connection with sincere, uh, compassionate motivation. On the occasion of 21st Biennial Jaina Convention held Friday last week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama applauded the non-violent way of life propagated by the Jain tradition and its vegetarian movement. One of the ancient Indian tradition is Jainism. Really wonderful, strictly non-violent way of life, your organization, you see, uh, re really have great potential uh, to promote in the society non-violent and, and also including uh, vegetarianism. Kasha, the cabinet of Central Tibetan Administration, appointed Shadong Tashigatso as the political secretary for the Central Tibetan Administration. Shadong Tashigatso was previously serving as the secretary of the Tibetan Supreme Justice Commission. Sikyong also announced the appointment of the additional secretary, Tenzing Lekshe, as the new official spokesperson of the Central Tibetan Administration. He will also remain as the director of Tibet Policy Institute until Mr. Dawat Sinning, representative at the office of Tibet based in Taiwan, takes charge. The former secretary of Department of Finance, Hishi Wangmu, has taken the charge of Tibetan Supreme Justice Commission as its secretary. Three members of the German parliament, Margaret Baus, Maria klein Schimek, and Claudia Roth, vice president of the German parliament, extended their greetings to congratulate Si Kyung Pembet Sitting on its election victory on Thursday last week. They reaffirmed their continuous support and solidarity with the Tibetan people. Tibetan Medical and Astro Institute, Mensikhang, facilitated Si Kyung Pembet Sitting on his official visit to the institute on Monday this week. Si Kyung extolled the rapid progress made by Men si Kang over the years and encouraged that the institute plays a crucial role not just in providing physical and mental health care to public, but empowering the youth by providing resources for education and through employment generation. The Tibet Bureau Geneva released a report titled 100 Atrocities of Chinese Communist Party in Tibet, a handbook on the history of Chinese Communist Party's atrocities on its 100th year on Thursday last week. The handbook is offered as a reminder that it is not a mark of success, but has occurred rather due to the oppressive rule on the personal liberties of the people inside the country. The handbook seeks to challenge the attempts of Chinese Communist Party to erase its violent history by tracing some of its brutal treatments in Tibet since the occupation. An online seminar on China's destruction in Tibet was organized by the Office of Tibet Washington DC in collaboration with IPK Media on Wednesday this week, a day before the Chinese Communist Party marked its centenary on 1st July. 
The event was part of a 100-hour discussion led by the Chinese scholars around the world on the CCP's destructive policies. The speaker spoke about the human rights violations inflicted on the Tibetans in Tibet and how the Chinese authorities are sinicizing Tibetans in Tibet. The Office of Tibet London hosted a virtual panel discussion titled His Holiness the Dalai Lama on Environment and Climate Appeal to the World on His Holiness's 86th birthday. The event remembered one of His Holiness's core concerns and contributions to humanity, which is the urgent environmental issues facing our planet. This year, the United Nations Climate Change Conference, COP26, will be held in the United Kingdom and as there is much expectation that politicians, diplomats and head of states will concentrate on achieving agreement on net zero emission rates and targeted global climate temperature. Senator Malcolm Byrne, an Irish Fianna Fáil politician, spoke in the upper house of the Irish Parliament in condemnation of the Chinese Communist Party's genocide and human rights abuses in Tibet, Hong Kong and Xinjiang on Monday this week. Uh, we know about uh, how the Tibetan people uh, have been subjected to uh, brutal persecution and repression uh, for decades. Uh, we've seen through over the last year the introduction of the national security law that China has crushed uh, press and legal freedoms in Hong Kong and has detained uh, political opponents and dissidents there. And those MEPs who have not only con condoned the human rights abuses of the Communist Party, uh, indeed it's not a surprise because they backed Lukashenko, they backed Assad, they backed Maduro, uh, we need to call them out. So much for this week. See you next time and have a good weekend.